You're watching Better for America, sponsored by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now, AMAC has long held the support of our country's armed forces veterans to be a priority, having through the years endorsed a number of initiatives aimed at improving the lives of millions of citizens who have answered the call to serve. Joining me now is Carl Hosfield, AMAC's Vice President of AMAC Senior Resources Network. And at AMAC, Carl oversees AMAC's Medicare Advisory Division. And you can be connected with one of our great licensed insurance agents for any questions you have regarding your Medicare, including enrolling in a plan. Carl, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Rebecca. You know, Carl, I opened up talking just a brief moment about our great veterans and the work that AMAC is committed to uh, serving our veterans. We do so much to imp help improve the lives of our veterans, those who have served. But Carl, there are so many questions that we've been getting this time of year from our veterans. So I super appreciate you being here with Veterans Day just around the corner on November 11th. Uh, if you could first share with our great listeners, what should they know about how Medicare works with their VA coverage? Yes, thank you, Rebecca. I'm glad we're talking about this. And uh, we have so much respect for our veterans and we get so many questions. And one of my biggest concerns over the many, many years of doing this is we realize that veterans are often misled, misguided, or maybe important information is omitted in discussions about Medicare and the VA and their health insurance. And so, you know, I'd like to set the story straight and also encourage you to speak to one of our licensed advisors so that if you have any detailed questions, we can discuss that with you. And basically, here's how it works. If you have, if you're becoming Medicare eligible and you're also a veteran and you get your health insurance through the VA, you have options. First of all, we encourage you, the Veterans Administration encourages you, and Center for Medicare Services encourages you to enroll into original Medicare Parts A and B, even though you also have the VA coverage. And the reason for that is it gives you options. Medicare and the VA do not coordinate health insurance benefits. So basically they don't speak to each other. They don't duplicate coverage necessarily. It's real simple. If you get your coverage at the VA, that's okay. But what happens if you need coverage outside of the VA? That's where Medicare can come help. With Medicare, you can see any doctor's office or hospital that accepts Medicare insurance. And so therefore, if you happen to become into a situation medically where you can't get that coverage from the VA, you would then have the option to go to any facility like any other Medicare beneficiary. And with that being said too, you can also choose to enroll into a Medicare supplement plan or a Medicare Advantage plan if you so choose to. And those are the things we can talk to you about if you, if you call us and, and we can discuss your options, talk to you about cost, understand your budget, your needs, and point you in the right direction. Excellent. So just to underscore what you said, you're encouraging our listeners, if you're Medicare eligible and you've got VA coverage, still go ahead and enroll in Parts A and B. That covers your doctors, your hospital coverages, and certainly will help you if you're traveling out of state, for example, uh, and you don't have easy access to, uh, to health insurance through the VA. So excellent That's advice, right. Carl. Thank you so much. Now, there is a lot of confusion between the Medicare annual election and the Medicare open enrollment period. They like to throw a lot of these terms yeah. at us, but they are two very right. different things. So how do they work, Carl? And what are the dates that Medicare beneficiaries need to know about? Sure, let's try to clear up a little bit of that confusion, right? We have right now, we're in the Medicare annual election period. Some people do refer to that as the open enrollment period, and that runs October 15th to December 7th. And that allows a Medicare beneficiary to make a change or pick up a Medicare Advantage plan or a prescription drug plan that will go into effect January 1st. Now, a few years back, Medicare implemented what they call the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. And what that allows a beneficiary to do is once they enroll into that Medicare Advantage plan, they get the opportunity to use it between January 1st and March 31st. That's the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. And during that time, if they feel like they want to make a change to that plan or they feel like, you know what, I made a mistake or I changed my mind, I want to go back to original Medicare. I don't want an Advantage plan. January 1 through March 31 gives a beneficiary that time to do that. 
And we want to make sure every American who's enrolled into Medicare understands that and that they know what they can do during that time. And if you have questions about that, you're more than welcome to call us. Excellent. And for those listening, again, keep in mind, Medicare supplements are different than Medicare Advantage plans. To learn those differences, give us a call. There's a lot to that, that, uh, for us to discuss here on this podcast, but go to our website as well, where you can find so much information on the differences between Medicare supplements and Medicare Advantage plans. But again, important people understand that there is a window of time beginning January 1st through March 31st, where you can disenroll from a Medicare Advantage plan, return back to original Medicare, or purchase a Medicare supplement plan. So thank you for clearing that up, Carl. That's important stuff, important dates to know. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our great Medicare agents. You work directly with our team, Carl. You and I, over the last decade, have built up an incredible uh, team. You really have been leading the charge in, in uh training our Medicare agents uh, and counseling them uh, so that they're able to help the thousands of AMAC members that we help each and every week here. What is the responsibility of a Medicare agent to an inquiring AMAC member? So when somebody calls us in, what are some of the things that our Medicare agents are doing uh, to take good care of AMAC members? Yep, Rebecca, this is just carrying over Dan Weber's and your own philosophy, what I've tried to piggyback on over the years and help our agents grasp and be a part of and be passionate about is that our agents truly have one goal and one goal only, and that's to understand the customer's needs, to understand the Medicare beneficiary's needs, and simply help them find the right plan that is right for them. And we like to use the word suitable or suitability, right? We, our agents are not uh, incentivized to steer somebody into any type of plan, Medicare Advantage supplement or otherwise. There's no such thing as the best plan in the market. It's really what's right for that individual person's needs. And we hold that philosophy very high in, in the way we do business because we can rest our heads at night knowing that every single customer that we help, we had one goal and one goal in mind. We don't care what, the, what insurance company it's placed with. We don't care what the premium is. We don't care uh, what type of plan it is. We care that we had an educated discussion with our member and we care that the member walks away with that confident that they worked with their expert advisor and they're confident they walked away with the plan that's right for them now and into their future. Yeah, I'm so proud of the team here. Uh, we do get dozens of written letters, uh, testimonials, both in, in the mail and via email from AMAC members who say, thank you so much because you folks have really helped us out. So check us out uh, to learn more. Definitely give us a call. We have that 800 number up here on the screen. Uh, Carl, does it cost more to work with an agent here? I know the answer to this, but does it cost more to yeah. work with an agent uh, than if somebody just goes ahead and does it their, themselves, for example? Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that question. That, that's a very important topic to me, mainly because I think there's a fear out in the market amongst Medicare beneficiaries that, oh, just like using a CPA or something like that to do my taxes, is this going to cost me more to use a licensed agent? to help me enroll into a Medicare plan as opposed to just doing it myself. And believe it or not, there's still thousands and thousands of people out there doing this on their own because they're worried that there's gonna be some cost or commission related that's gonna come out of their pocket in order to get the help they need. And that's simply not true. Now, you're absolutely allowed to do it on your own. If you visit myamacmedicare.com, we, uh, we have our own open enrollment platform for Medicare Advantage and drug plans if you just feel comfortable. You feel like I don't need to talk to an agent at this point. Maybe you've been enrolled into a Medicare for a few years. We have that system as well, but we still highly encourage you to work with an agent because first of all, it's free. And second of all, you look at it like this. They're not just your agent now helping you enroll into the plan. They're your agent in the future. Not a lot different than you know, your home and auto agent um, or something like that where, where you have a relationship with this person now. Our agents are career agents and our agents uh, stay with us for a very long time and have clients that date back to over a decade. And so the opportunity to have that working relationship with your dedicated licensed advisor is very comforting for our members. And we, we suggest that you take advantage of that if you haven't yet done so. 
Excellent. And you can also fill out a form on the on the website, MyMacMedicare.com, and schedule an appointment. Let, let us know what time is preferred. Our, you know, we do have some uh, hold times, but we're trying to help everyone as they call us, and we're doing a great job at that. Thank you, Carl. Uh, I just want to go back to these dates, this period of time that we're in right now. That is the annual election period. As you mentioned, Carl, it started on October 15th. It runs through December 7th. Now, what happens if after the AEP December 7th deadline, uh, what happens if they chose the wrong Medicare Advantage plan? And I know we spoke about this, but just go ahead and explain. Do they have options sure. or are they stuck yeah, with that plan about, for the entire year? Yeah, let's talk about a few important things to know during this time. First of all, you can make as many selections into a Medicare Advantage and or prescription drug plan um, that you want. And the last selection that you make before December 7th is what becomes effective January 1. Now, if you're coming into Medicare, the annual election period now, and you already have an Advantage plan, and you said, you know what, I don't need to make a change, and so you do nothing, and the deadline comes, that Medicare Advantage open enrollment period is still in effect for you come January 1. At that point, you can still reassess and say, do I want to keep this plan? Do I want to enroll into a different Medicare Advantage plan? Or do I want to disenroll and go back to original Medicare? And that's the same. You could technically make 10 different enrollment choices of a Medicare Advantage plan, but the last choice you make prior to the deadline at the end of the day in your local time on December 7th will be the plan that goes to into effect January 1st. But again, January 1 through March 31, that's kind of the opportunity for you to quote unquote, try out your plan. If you miss that March 31st deadline, you make no changes at that point, then from then on, you will be in that Medicare Advantage plan or that prescription drug plan that you chose for the rest of the year. And the next time you can assess that will be October 15th, 2024. Or if you may come into what's called a special election period of which there's several, but for example, if you move out of a planned service area, that's very common, give us a call and our agents will be able to talk to you about what you can do at that point because that'll give you a special election period to make a choice outside of the annual election period. But these are Excellent. things that happen every American during the year and that's why we suggest you talk to us so that we can talk it through with you and walk through your options. Very good. Now, one question that we hear of a lot is people do call and they say, is a Medicare supplement plan better than a Medicare Advantage plan? Uh, or at least they're, they're, that's, that's on the forefront of their mind. Can you explain the differences and perhaps answer that question? Sure, sure. Uh, to keep it in short as sweet as possible, we like to say there, that we can't really tell you that a Medicare supplement plan is better than a Medicare Advantage plan or vice versa on face value without doing a true needs analysis. The truth is, after understanding someone's needs, wants, budgets, uh, you know, future goals, then we could help somebody determine which plan's more suitable. But until then, no agent, no person out there could tell one Medicare beneficiary that a Medicare Advantage plan is better or a Medicare supplement plan is better. And that again goes back to our philosophy of saying, hey, you know what, we're not going to make any assumptions on your behalf. We're going to talk it through with you. We're going to educate you, help you understand what you need to know and then have you ask us questions back that are important to you. And from there together, we come to a conclusion of what's right for you. Excellent. Carl, do we have a number that you can rattle off for those who are listening and not watching this podcast yeah. uh, so that they can get a hold of us quickly? That's right. Our main Medicare line is 1-800-334-9330. Again, that's 9330 when you give us a call we might be a little busy but our agents are waiting ready to take your call and even if you have to wait a few minutes you have the option to leave a voicemail and we'll get right back to you you can also speak to one of our customer service representatives they'll take your information down and we will get back to you within 24 hours 
Excellent. Carl, thank you so much. Important information that you're sharing here with all of our great AMAC members. Also, check out the AMAC Foundation. They have recently expanded their support for the veterans community. The AMAC Foundation Veterans Outreach Program, they're working in collaboration with related support organizations nationwide. And we're doing that to serve and educate and inform America's great veterans on the programs available and policies that will improve their lives in honor of their service to our nation. So go ahead and check out the AMAC Foundation at amacfoundation.org. And don't forget, visit myamacmedicare.com for more information on how we can help you. God bless you. God bless you all. And God bless America. Have a great day, everyone. The Association of Mature American Citizens is the conservative voice for Americans 50 and older. AMAC is fighting for the values that you hold dear. Join today. Together, we can right the course of America.